Hey everybody, welcome to Strength Coach TV. I'm Anthony Rana. This is the show where we take you inside some of the country's best gyms, give you a tour, then we sit down with the owners and we talk a little bit of shop. We're brought to you by Marigold Foods at marigoldbars.com. This is my favorite protein bar. Non-GMO, gluten-free, low sugar, no preservatives. These things taste great. I have one every day. Now, great offer for you. Go to marigoldbars.com, put the code in STRENGTHCOACH10. You'll get $10 off your first order. You're going to love these bars, I guarantee it. All right, today I finish up my trip in LA with a really unique gym called Heart and Hustle. Kevin Lilly and Greg Mealy. I've known Greg for probably, we did a USAW course in like 2006. I've known him for a long time. It's been great to watch him build his brand and see his rise to the top of this industry. And uh, Heart and Hustle is located on the border of West Hollywood. They're in West Hollywood and like right near Beverly Hills. And uh, it's such a unique place. I really want you to pay attention and read between the lines on some of this. They, this is a really, uh, they do a great job of creating experience for their clients. They're doing, they do one-on-one -on -one training. They have three trainers in their gym at a time. Uh, and they're, they're still in the trenches, the two of them. Um, you'll see a lot of attention to detail. Everything is very thoughtful. Everything that they do has been thought out about how it's going to affect the client. For example, taking things like, they, like Kevin said, if, if somebody's hungry, they're going to make sure that person gets some food. Everything's built into the cost too. They have shakes, you get a water with your name on it. It's crazy. I mean, they've really thought of everything. What I really like too is, the way they take information from other industries like salons and restaurants and even architects um, and they apply it to what they're doing. So they're taking the best of these different industries and, and applying it to, uh, to the fitness business. Um, even with coaching, right? Uh, Kevin has a great analogy towards the end uh, about uh, one of the rope pulleys that you, they use and, and him coaching and the interaction that he has with clients. And that's what makes this special is uh, these guys are super unique facility, but they still deal with all the same problems that the rest of us have dealt with in owning a facility. They're a partnership. I asked them about that. How do they kind of manage their partnership as well? So uh, make sure you read between the lines, pay attention to what they're doing. You might not be able to replicate it completely completely at your place, but the principles are what we want you to take away from this. So let's head out to West Hollywood to Heart and Hustle. Hey guys, welcome to Beverly Hills. We are at Heart and Hustle. Kevin Lilly and Greg Mealy, the owners. Guys, thanks for doing this. Hey, thanks for coming, man. Thanks All for right. coming. Um, we're on Beverly Boulevard in Beverly Hills. Uh, pretty uh, busy location here. How long have you guys been here, first of all? Uh, we came in, we moved in March 2014. How was, how was that piece? Because you said you signed the lease a little bit early. It took a little while to open. Was there any issues opening that, you know, trainers can learn from? <laughs> I think, I think mean, the first issue is around. just making sure, first off, it's West Hollywood. There's oh, a, there is, there okay. is a difference. Okay. Uh, there is a difference in, in, in this yes. area. Right. Um, but finding an area out here that's zoned for a gym. I mean, there's a big part right. of opening a gym out here. That I think they say there's 10 parking spots you need okay. for every thousand square feet. Yeah. And there's ways around that through bikes, bike parking, okay. and uh, valet and other means. But oh, to okay. open a gym out in this area is, 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 there's a lot of headaches. I think it runs along the line of medical facilities. Uh, you need a certain amount of zoning issues yeah. for that. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Yeah. And what's the square footage here? Uh, just under 2,000, right? It's okay. So it's cool? It's all right, yeah. No, hey man, we're, we're, we're. <laughs> This is Gary. Everybody, this Gary. is Gary. Gary, Gary in the <laughs> shot. Hey. Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> yeah, worried. I'm sorry. I'm worried. Yeah. Please um, keep that. Two, it's 2,000 all together, Greg, or 2,000 <laughs> usable? Gary, he's better with the, the uh, numbers. So we moved in, it was, um, it's 1,900 square feet. 1,400 square feet of training space. And uh, back, uh, piggybacking on what Greg was saying, when we were looking for space, we were very lucky for this entire building was zoned for fitness, so we got yeah. grandfathered in. Okay. Right, so we should technically have 20 parking spots. Fortunately, we have two, right? Okay. And uh, it's a dated concept, you know, and the rule was written in the 80s, we were told, for big box gyms, and for that it makes sense. But now, as the industry kind of evolutionizes, we are finding more concept gyms, and this is yeah. a concept gym. It's private personal training, heart and hustle is an experience. We only see two to three people on the hour, 
we're okay with those spots, but it had to be specifically in a building that was previously. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, um, like, let's say you were like a, a florist, do, how many spots do they need or another business? Do well, you guys I know, know? I know restaurant is the same as gym. Oh, restaurant it is. Okay. is 10 to one unless it's already grandfathered in. Yeah. That was the only one that they really taught us. Okay. About. Okay. Or have a valet option. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, the valet option has to be, but then that's a whole other thing of like getting zoning from the city and it just, it, yeah, it really? becomes a very frustrating process, but uh, we're very blessed and uh, we'll see, we'll retackle that as we hopefully. Where will, where do you put a val like the cars that you're valeting because they need to go somewhere too. So where does that, where do you guys do for that? Well, luckily there is some up on the roof. We have a valet option there. Okay. Um, okay. Across the street, the landlords own a few of these buildings oh, okay. so a lot of the people yeah. um, hub out of the the place uh, yep. across the street and then on the street is two hour uh parking yeah in the yeah area. which not always easy to find as i just found out so <laughs> actually i caught it i parked on a side street and i didn't realize i read the sign it said two hour parking Monday through Friday, and I was like, wait a minute. Then I noticed all the permits, so I got back in my car and I started circling 68 around. 68 bucks, buddy. Oh, man, yeah, good <laughs> thing, good thing. Um, so you two guys are here. You guys yep. are the owners. You have, and how, any, how many more people are working for you? Uh, yeah, so we have three. We have uh, Adrian, Quinn, and Gary. Okay. Three, three great trainers, all went to school for uh, exercise science and all certified through many different associations. And uh, so five trainers now, and. Looking for our next intern really soon. You are, okay, great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but you're only doing three at a time. Three people can be in here. And you'll, we'll see this in the tour as well. Three people at a time are training at once. Yeah, we felt that three was, I mean, we had it when we started was two. And yeah. our, the kind of idea behind that was also, you know, not jamming up the space, yeah. as you see in a lot of gyms and personal training yeah. facilities. There's people all over. This guy's doing a dynamic warm up. This guy's doing power lifting and it creates a really yeah awkward space so it's yeah. almost like we wanted to think about like renting a hockey rink out you know this area is for you and your trainer yeah. that feeling that experience that area is for you and your trainer that's where you can create your your vibe and yeah. your energy as you do your programming yep. um, and then we opened it up to having three people because as we started to grow and it, it did change the energy off off the, the bat but okay. we learned yeah. we we learned to That's make it dance and then yeah. uh, and then now hopefully as we expand we can open up you know bring in some other trainers so we'll yeah. just try to cool. basically make sure that there's three people max on the training floor at, at a time all right very cool I think so much of it too is setting the expectations from day one from people, right? So like our, our OG clients that were used to just Greg and I and half the gym, they were the ones that were like, whoa, yeah. why is Adrian on the floor with a client? But you know, over time now it's just, but three is probably the max we could get in this room. Yeah, right? okay, great. Well, let's check it out. Uh, you guys have done some, it's a really interesting concept here. So wanna go check it out and get a tour. Awesome, yeah, man, thank let's you. Let's do it. Yep. All right, so this is Heart and Hustle. The experience kind of starts here where we offer parking. Clients either get dropped off, two cars here, but we do the shuffle if there's already cars. We got valet across the street, valet on the roof, and then two hours parking around the building. Cool, and you wanted, uh, like for some of your clients, obviously you didn't just want to have them have to come in the front door, right? I mean, because you have some people want a little more privacy. For sure, we have private interest for a little more of the uh, exclu um, private clients, let's say. Yeah. Um, and uh, plus it's usually pretty hectic sometimes in the front of the building because we are near a lot of big businesses. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and even though they're big businesses, no one kind of knows we're here. We're yeah. kind of just stay under the radar yeah. with that, which is pretty cool in itself. Very cool. Uh, I love all the branding, all these yeah. like little, these little things you got here, little stickers and, and all the little uh, the things coming in. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah. Creative yeah. Greg. Yeah. Now, yeah, it's kind of the idea. We wanted to have it an experience. We want clients to start thinking once they once they pull in. Just like that line when you're walking in Universal Studios before the ride. Yeah. There's like you're picking up stuff and you see all the different things and you go, there was a thought behind that. You know, it's just not walking in, bright lights, somebody at the front desk. Yeah. You know, we want a kind of cool feel, you yeah. know, like the, the Goodfella entrance, yes. if, if you would. Very so we're cool. coming through the kitchen of the Goodfella entrance. <laughs> um, welcome to the hustle. Um, both East Coast kids, so we pay homage to Bruce right. and, uh, and Biggie Smalls.
we love the lighting too. Like yep. that's, you were talking earlier about the lighting. Obviously, this was a conscious choice. This is not like your average when you're walking in. This is a, such a cool vibe. Yeah, coming in. You guys did a great job. I'm sure uh, we had these meetings. Uh, there's conversations you have when you're opening a gym, even about the lighting. Do you go yeah. overhead? Do you go along the wall? I mean, yep. if you're looking at design stuff i do go to a lot of the design dwell magazine things and they talk about lighting how from the if you notice in hotels it comes from the floor up mm -hmm. how it creates a different feel when you walk into your room yeah. or walk into that hotel and when you're looking at a budget and you look at hey do i do bright white do i do off white what is the the feel you want to have do you just want the beams overhead that you hear the energy going through them all day you know we're under these lights for 12 15 hours a day yeah. we kind of want a good feel on our eyes on ourselves and for the vibe of the gym. Yep. So we wanted a cool feel, yeah, once the clients walk in that can get a good good energy when they come in to feel like home before we get busy. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, so they're gonna come in here and this is where they're gonna end up putting their stuff away? Yeah, we got two NFL lockers. They can sit here, uh, put their shoes on, do whatever they gotta do to get ready. Uh, men's room, women's room. Kind of wanted, to, once again, a warm feel to this. Yeah, totally. And Love not just up. training. Yeah, not just training. I mean, this is Paul Nicklin, like I was saying, he's a big Nat Geo photographer. Um, goes out, grows his beard out just to capture certain shots. Um, and the conscious client and the conscious person, I think, could see this and go and understand it and see why we're doing all the inner workings of what, whether it's program design or all the so, engineering of a train, you know, there's yeah. little underlying things being in California, you know, um, this is this is an artist I saw down in Venice Beach. They always say that's like the trainer inside of you, you know, the angel, but then you gotta kick ass when you gotta kick ass. There you, know? you go, there you go. Nice. Um, but still keeping conscious, we got urine charts, we talk about squatty potties, we talk about other warm ways to tell people um, without so much hard coaching them on yeah. nutrition yep. or sitting them down and having them with a pen and paper. You know, it's more of a warm talking to them as a friend type vibe Absolutely. when we talk about nutrition or digestion or other things that of course affect the training. Yeah. Um, this is the kitchen, so it is, you know, they say, you know, as with a home, they say you always end up in the kitchen with your wine <laughs> and having your charcuterie board. You know, it's never at the dining room table. So a lot of meetings take place in here. A lot of talking takes place with the team. A lot of hiding behind the fridge for us trainers to buy uh, buy our little bites. I do want to um, show this because everybody uh, I just posted on posted on Instagram. I got my own bottle with my name on it. Very yes, cool. Sir. It's a great touch, man. Yeah. It's a lot of these little things that are so different that are just you know you guys have done an amazing job with. Thank you. We actually switched that refrigerator door. It was over here, but from here. I can eat real quick. <laughs> nice. That's up. I'm sure a lot of you trainers can relate to <laughs> when you're seeing 10 yeah. people back to back. Yeah. You know, you're trying to find uh, quick nutrition that can hold you sustainable to make yep. your first client energy like your last client's energy. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so water. Uh, we offer, of course, towels. We provide some post workout nutrition, pre workout. We're here really early. Kev has super early clients, so we pr do provide coffee. If they're into Bulletproofs, we'll make a Bulletproof for them. Green tea, green tea latte. Like, it's not so much a, a bourgeois thing. It's more of a conscious thing that we just try to offer to yeah. our to our people that, that are coming in and just might need a little pick-me-up or something like that. And this is all built into the price. Are you charging, like... No, like, it's all yeah. built in, man. Yeah, I mean, okay. We're very fortunate to have a fantastic partner in Vega. Okay. And uh, it's truly a cell phone brand that we believe in yeah and uh you know so that helps out and very cool but that partnership just happened so we just we ate the cost of that for the first three and a half years of the business just to make sure that clients understood the value you know yeah. our business plan from day one was build value and it'll it'll happen you know, yeah it'll feel the dreams action we often refer to and um uh, yeah, one set price. We don't want we don't want people coming in here thinking about transactions or business. It's yeah. Really, this is their time. How you know they take time out of their busy schedule and you know very high impact life out in the world, whether it's sports or Hollywood or mom or whatever it is yeah. to unplug for an hour. So we don't want them thinking about anything. Yeah. You know, they're like, ah, oh, I haven't eaten. Somebody's running and getting them food. Like, yep. and we're not really thinking about 
who or where that money is yeah. coming from. It's yeah. just get we in got there. It. It's yeah. a family. It's awesome. They're training with us. They become family. You know, we're seeing them for years after years. You know, they're referring us. Their kids. They're referring us husbands. Yeah. They're referring us friends. So we always never look at it as the dollar thing. We look at it, how can we make this better each yeah. day? And we yeah. talk about it. And then as you just saw the water, we're also, you know, we look at other industries like the restaurant industry, how they prep the night before. There's a prep, there's a, something that goes on and it should be done in our industry as well. Knowing uh, who's coming in, if there's any issues during that hour um, from food, hydration, energy, music, other things that could affect that hour per hour, especially with three trainers on the floor, there's three clients, there's three different worlds meshing, you know, we try to be conscious of that as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see the gym. Yeah. So welcome. <laughs> I mean, this is it. This is the training floor. Um, like I said, three trainers on the floor. We try to lay it out in some sort of quadrant area doing the best we can with the space we have. Um, tools we have, we went around the world, we got unique tools, we go to all the Ursas, all the conventions, find out what's the latest and greatest. Yeah. Can we incorporate it within our programs? Does it fit into the space? We do have storage somewhere where we store other pieces that we can slowly bring back in if we want. Um, each area, if you're looking from a program design standpoint, can you squat them, can you hinge them, can you push them, can you pull them, can you get your plyos, can you get your conditioning done in this, in an area? Um, uh, all your warm-ups, you have your foam rollers, we have sliders, we do work with uh, Hyper Ice and we have all their guns and, and vibration tech, uh, technologies that we can roll them out beginning or ending the workout with. Um, and uh, it changes it up. Uh, like I said, one day I might be here with a client and we try to rotate each day to a different, yeah, so the best each, we can into the area that we have. One, so this is, that's area one, this would be area two right here, over here, yeah. and then three is over here. And you try, like, so you will, you will kind of rotate them through the different, like, in a week, like just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah I mean, as best we can, right? So yeah. hybrids of those three areas that you just kind of said, like north, middle zone, south side, but you know, some clients are every day. Yeah. And then some yeah. clients might have like a Monday, Thursday split. So it's like the best we can. Right? Yeah. So like, yeah. I don't know, maybe Greg's up there three days a week and I'm here and then the new guys rotate through the middle. Yeah. There's not an exact science to yeah, it, yeah. but it works. Yeah. 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 And we, so, and we know, no, and we know if we've been up there two days in a row or whatever, that clients, once again, we don't want that client to just come to the same area. Yeah. And that's why we have so many variations of tools. It's just not a squat rack and a kettlebell yes. and a dumbbell and a barbell. You know, we want to have different things because we are seeing these clients four or five days a week. We want to have different variations, different things that they can integrate within the program. And they go, hey, I got a different feel that day, you know? Absolutely. And like, for example, this thing is like wild. I love yeah. this. Um, yeah. Greg built that. Did you yeah. really? Don't let, him not, don't let him not tell you about Greg, it. Greg, give us a rundown of what is this yeah. right here? You showed it to me before, but I want you to show everybody else what that, what that piece of equipment is. Um, Air technology, once again, very similar to the Kaiser. I actually think they own very similar patents in that world. It's literally the shock that's in a hatchback, if you would, that is the driving force of it. Um, you can do different variations of upper body exercises from here, flies, push, pull, alternate stuff. You could do core work, anti-core work, rotation. Yeah. Um, we integrate it into beginning warming a client up um, or a finisher at the end. Yeah. Um, we've been experimenting with adding different resistance to it because there is only one set resistance. Um, but uh, we we love it. Every client we put on it, it's almost it's in the program throughout the week. Every client, once again, hasn't really seen it or used it. Yeah. So when they do come in, we're like, uh, the, it, it is a new, because they haven't seen it, it's a good new tool opener for them to go, oh, wow, i never seen it, i never used that. Um, and it's safe from a rehab standpoint to a professional athlete standpoint from the low end, high end spectrum of yeah. training. Absolutely. I mean, talk about that, that equipment design uh, decisions, because we're in a small space, so how do you guys make those decisions like from that perspective, like you see something new, like man, it'd be great to have that. Cause you were saying the importance, you got people in here four or five days a week. It does help to just change it up by just saying, okay, we're just gonna get in the squat rack and do some kettlebells. How do you make those decisions? Yeah, I think 
you know, the decisions of how we lay it out or the decisions of, of how what we, to buy. Because, you know, purchase. sometimes when you have a small space, where are you going to put everything? Yeah, I think right? it all falls back on programming and how much versatility you can bring to it. Yeah. Right? So whether I'm, you know, working with an athlete that's working in a range of motion or working with a guy who wants to put a hypertrophy in the chest, I want to make sure that I can use a similar piece of equipment. Right? Yeah. And so if you look around and we go through these pieces, you can do either with the search. Right, we can do various movements with the hoist leg press, right? Yeah. So it's just, is it, is the value there, right? Is the value there and does the piece have enough versatility? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the pieces in here, and that's kind of what we talk to all our guys about during their internship program is like, give me all the ranges of motion or give me a bodybuilding program on this piece or on that piece and by the way get as creative as you want and if it's something that's either unsafe or we see as a stretch like we'll tell you no we don't yeah. ever want to see you doing that right yeah, yeah but you know at the end of the day as we walk around and we come up with our programming you know so much of in here or so much of the attachments in here really allow for us to be really dynamic with the program yeah take it you know, I don't know that one of my clients has ever done the same workout twice in the last five years, right? Unless it's something very specific they're training for, yeah. right? And uh, I think it's a good thing. I also think that builds value as to why they keep coming back. What's today's program? Yeah, absolutely. Guys, let me ask you about this, okay? Again, <laughs> small space, uh, the decision to put this desk in there. Uh, is it something that you would change? I mean, can talk to you. Yeah, man. We, I see we, the smile. So. No, we, I mean, it started, that, that's where it was. I mean, that was our brand when you walked in. Yeah. You saw that. You saw the, you saw, oh, yeah, when we, right, we so got this, I'm sorry. Yeah. So at first, this was going to be like just the reception area. Mm -hmm. And the funny story is I think we, we had an interior design guy who was my client that Greg kicked out. <laughs> Greg's like, yo, tell Mike we got it from here. I'm like, what? And we had a desk here, and this was going to be like there was actually a TV. Oh yeah, you're right. There. there was going to be TV shop apparel yeah, kind of feel, kind of like a chill area. And then like we even thought about doing a sliding door here. Yeah, then, like, like a like one of those barn room. doors that would close yeah, if we yeah, had yeah. a certain. Point we, to... Greg's like, I, I can't deal with this. This is training space. And the yeah, first right. thing we put up here was the Versa climber. And so then the Versa climber was here. And then I was like, dude, the verse climber's in the in the lounge. What, what are we doing? And so there was like a, there was your metal yeah. bench. Yeah, there, there was a bench there. Right? Yeah. And then so, I, I can't tell you how many times. And like at first it was frustrating, but then we ended up just having so much fun. How many times we completely changed this? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. all in the likeliness and all of the goal of how do we create the best experience? How do we create the best yeah. experience? So then the desk went back there, and it was back there for a minute. It was back there maybe. <laughs> For a year? Yeah. 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 yeah we and put the lights, we put everything. But look, the decision to do the desk in the beginning was Hey, right, we need we need an office. We By the way, we have no we have no office, no place to sit down we, and do we program had an design. We wanted across the street, but we decided uh, that it wasn't worth it. We wanted to be in the trenches completely. And uh, so then the desk was good, man. The desk was back there. And then we put it over here and yeah, I just think that if we took the desk out, because that was a suggestion in the beginning when I said to Greg, we should get a third trainer in here and the argument went back and forth, there's not enough room, clients won't feel the value, yeah. right? And I was like, let's just give me this fucking desk, it's yeah. so big. And he's like, no, because then we're just a box gym. We're, yeah. Then we're just like, a, do you remember these guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg was like, then you walk in and then there's, you know, we're just a bunch of equipment, there's no, and I agree now, I get it, the desk, pulls the room in to like let people know this yeah. isn't just like your gymnasium this is a place of work and a yeah. business and I think about it too I, I i like to think about it too like an architect you know you can sit in that architect office and draw all your cad system and your program design in behind a closed door but then there's the guys that laid a blueprint out on the job site and they sit there and look and they look and they see lighting and, and trees and yeah. wind patterns and all that stuff and I feel like us behind that desk also you know what I mean as you design your program you're seeing stuff to go 
Yeah, okay, I'm gonna be over here today. Yeah. Or you're overlooking other trainers, getting ideas why they progress, regress certain exercises. Any kind of, and it's funny, even though it's in the middle of the floor, there's some days I could be back there, a client will walk in, train with somebody, won't even acknowledge me. Like it's like they're at, they're at a point sometimes I feel like, they might say hi, but I'm like, I'm into the now part of the art of the wall now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. they don't even know it's there, but I, I do think from- And the conversations a, they had, and all personal trainers know how personal these conversations get. What's interesting is they don't even care the three bystanders are sitting behind there. Or now there's yeah. times where there's four of us all sat there and then one trainer and a client, the conversation get really deep. And it's just like, whoa, I okay. you know my four partners <laughs> are listening too, right? And it's like, like Greg's, to Greg's point is I don't think sometimes they notice, but yeah, we took that desk out early. I think Greg got it at a trade show, right? Where'd you get that? HD, uh, Buttercup. HD Buttercup. Yeah, yeah I saw it was cool. it was very a floor cool. sample. I just thought it was perfect, and it, it goes with exactly what we wanted to feel. We're East Coast working class kids, and a lot of the design in here, from the reclaimed wood to the handcrafted dumbbells to keeping the rafters up, we wanted that yeah, feel. Cool. Yeah, we wanted to still have a feel that there's work going on. This is pretty cool. Too. Yeah. Greg built that too. Nice. I'll let him not tell you <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, I grew up in a family that did carpentry construction, okay. so it's it is. Uh, there is a lot of things that I feel in, come in, and seeing a live slab wood, I still I feel like hopefully one day, you know, I get into woodworking when you retire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I saw the live slab, and um, I thought it'd be a good fit. To, to add to the aesthetics of the gym, yeah. but also I wish you got more play, this feedback, but it is good for uh, hand coordination, timing, and things like that. People do get over there and get busy on it, um, but I feel like it does tie in that corner well um, to what we have going on here. It really does. Oh, yeah. Um, what, before I ask you a question, what you, what's going on here? What is, it, what is this thing? You've never seen that. So it's a Brazilian rope pull from Pure Motion. We love this guy's stuff, um, functional training. Our uh, guy out of Alabama, he has a lot of landmine attachments, a lot of things that are non-conventional ways of pulling, um, and, uh, pulling, pressing, all that stuff. But this landmine attachment, so it's, a lot of people just throw a landmine in there and grab the end of it, and sometimes their grip or that end of that barbell is the limiting factor to the exercise. Yeah. Not knowing that there's people that invented things that can change that so your limiting thing isn't the grip on it. Yeah. Um, so he's a lot of cool p pieces. One of the things that we love about is the rope pull is that first of all you get grip. Yeah. Uh, Kevin actually explains it well how the, the personal training part of it. Oh look, I find like Greg and I were just down at Ursa and uh, the brand, is it Versa that has their own rope pull? No. Marpo. Marpo, Marpo it's yeah. It's a great piece. Yeah. The Marpo rope pulley. Okay. In fact, I it's just like a pull system, it's but it's ha it has system, it, the cam in there. Don't need anybody to give you any resistance. And I actually, I find it very therapeutic to do repetitive cardio. Yeah. And that's one that I can get on and go for like an hour, no problem. But from a personal training standpoint, like the rope pull, I have found there to be so much value in. No pull. Right, so I'd say, you know, split stance and then arm over arm, you pull. But the fact that I'm the resistance now, I find that it builds such good value in this coaching aspect, yes. right? And so, you know, we thought about, you know, maybe replacing these with the Marpos, but I'm like, man, there's something about me coaching and this happening to realize, not only do you need me right now, but I want to be in this trench with you, right? And it's just like, yeah, yeah. again, it's not that it's a, there's any falseness to it, but it's rather like this builds the bond. To, yeah. From, and I felt it from day one, right? Day one, I think before we had these, we were just throwing it over. We had the crossbar. Remember the crossbar? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We were just throwing it over the crossbar and using that as support. But you're the resistance, and it's just like if yeah. you have one set resistance, you got to have them get off this mount change the resistance this he sees he's it's too easy he can apply more pressure yeah, it's yeah. too hard he can ease up yeah you know you can add it from a strength point of view by adding a lot of resistance throwing it around or you can do it like kevin saying from a conditioning standpoint have him just rep it out you know what yeah. i mean tricep work pull work rotation work to change the stances like i was doing depending on what you're trying to get out of it yeah. and it comes with this system so if you want a little more, more vertical to horizontal pulling you know and just I mean, just that in half Oh, yeah, really? This was actually longer, yeah, okay. but we 
And then it also rotates 180 degrees in, depending on the room. Okay, it's awesome. Really nice. Yeah, very cool. Um, but work, it's true work too, yeah. also. It's not getting behind the machine with a pin. I mean, your, your work, you're pulling here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it become a staple of our programming. So, once again, back to the quadrants. Every quadrant has one of these in it. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. I didn't notice yeah, that. Yeah, there's a rope variation in each. Nice. Um, let me ask you, I got two questions for you guys from, from a business perspective. Yeah. Um, so, all right, you're still, you guys are in the trenches, both of you. You guys are working your butts off. Um, and you're very unique. Extremely unique. I mean, I got a million things running through my head. Like, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you grow from that perspective? Um, of you know, because it, it is a lot. It's going to be a lot about Kevin and Greg. You know what I mean? So, how do you guys? Well, like for the future, like how do you grow? How do you also like cultivate these new employees as well and educate them and kind of throw in your unique personalities in there? I think, t I, I'm looking at it two ways and we talk about it. I, I guess growing from, an, uh, Kevin will get more involved with growing from an employee standpoint. Yeah. I think we're growing, we're also talking about, you know, doing our own kind of products or things that we've found that work, yeah. you know, with us that we can integrate with our clients, whether they're traveling on the road or home. I think there's a, a, a place for that to grow, um, to get us out of the, trenches if you would or have other streams of revenue coming in that still sound to our beliefs and our yeah. brand you know like the towels are ours you know the laundry bags the everything that's us we're trying to figure out like let's get everything down and it's taken five years plus to get this right down to where we feel we want to get to the point where if we ever open another location we have a good enough brand yeah. a good enough system down to take it to the next level yeah. but within that brand we need manpower and I think Kevin would go into like gro grooming employees and yeah. things. Yeah, you're right. At the end of the day, clients come in and you know what they've heard or the Instagram or whatever. It's like, oh, I want Greg or Kevin, you know. And that's you know, it's fine. But at the end of the day, there's only so many hours that Greg and I can train. Yeah. You know? And uh, we both, none of us, neither of us, are looking back from pulling back from training right now, but. You know, grooming these guys and making it less about Kevin and Greg and more about the anvil is the goal. Right? Yeah. Because the anvil and the branding that, you know, not only from what you see, but what you feel, right? So what you see is a cool brand, a cool feel, a cool aesthetic. But then also, like, when you say heart and hustle and the people that have been with it, whether it's once or for the last five years, they're going to tell you something about it. And I hope it's not really necessarily about Greg and Kevin, or at least yeah. that's the goal. Right? Yeah. And so, Absolutely. but the, the challenge is, is, you know, Adrian's been here two and a half years, and Adrian's got a great book of business and is doing probably 200 appointments this month. But, you know, we still have some clients that are like, uh uh, you too. And, uh, you know, that's always going to be a challenge, and that's yeah. fine. But, you know, it's like anything else. If you want somebody to repeat what you've built, you've got to really put time and effort into developing those people. And uh, I think that's the business we're in, is developing people, not only our clients, but also our trainers that want to come through it. Yeah. So, you know, expansion, the goal is to continue to get busier in here and, you know, who knows what's next, yeah. right? But hopefully what's next is not Kevin and Greg, what's next is the end, right? Yep. And we'll be behind it blowing oxygen into yeah. it, but very cool. Yeah, and it's about, you know, from an organization process, and we're still getting better at this five years in, I don't think it's done, is the systems, right? And we're still working on it. The guy Gary we brought on, it brings a unique talent. Quinn brings a unique talent. And we're learning even new systems with their yeah. unique talents, so. And that's not only systems, it's a program. No, no, no. That's systems the systems to run a gym, gym. Yeah. to know how to open, how to close. You know, we're trying to create a Michelin star restaurant in a gym. You know, looking that 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 duplicatable thing where they go in there, and that you could send a food critic in, and they're like, dude, that fucking they nailed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? From everything. Yeah. So we want that down to know from ordering fruits to ordering water to, you know, if equipment's out, how quick we could get on it to be fixed. You know what yeah. I mean? We have tools. You know, the tools get pulled out all the time, and I'm sure a lot of gym owners will talk about that. You know, having the right 
tools to on the fly get a down piece of equipment up and running you know what i mean and that the client doesn't see it because then you know they look at it a certain way if that piece is down like oh these guys ain't you know you couldn't fix that before i came in you know our treadmill was down for three days they had to order a part and we have clients that want to use the treadmill you know what i mean and yeah. Um, yeah, but the systems is in everything, man. Yeah. Everything from when they walk in the door to, to billing yeah. to um, our flow of trying to have a meeting system, you know what I mean? Which we're, we're learning a yeah. lot, a lot back. I think you guys, I think an important lesson for everybody too to learn from you guys is you guys do not, you guys aren't stuck in a box of the fitness industry. You keep talking about restaurants, salons, barbers, you know, like yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, that's a really important concept that people should take away from what you guys are doing. I got one more question. That's it. I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. You guys, the best partners that I've found, and Greg, you did Mike Boyle's mentorship. Mike and Bob, they do completely different things, right? The best partners that I've found, have, you know, they have specific roles that are doing different things. You guys are doing similar things. How do you manage that partnership? Because there are other things to do, like you said, in those systems. How do you manage that partnership when you guys are pretty similar? Well, I think we're similar in the sense that we have similar vision, but I think what maybe we haven't explained or maybe what people don't see, but our family understands is we have very different goals when it comes to operating from a business standpoint. Greg's eye and Greg's design cannot be touched, right? Like, yeah. and he brings that, right? Yeah. And my original background is business and finance management, right? So these are things that like, I don't think, like a trainer is a good trainer, but a trainer may not be able to, to know how to design a dream and a trainer may not be able to know how to balance his checkbook yes. or strategize for your next plan or your next move or how to fight to get different percentage rates or, Right, so you know, Greg and I actually we're very different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but in the best of ways. Yeah, and an important piece there to pick up is the respect that you have for what he does, and the respect that Greg Absolutely. has for you. Because a lot of times, our partners will just say, "Okay, we're we're both trainers, but Ken, you do the books. Greg, you do uh, the the social media. Like, and they don't res- have a respect." for that person, for that other role that they just assigned. And you can hear it in your voice, the respect that you have, like you just said, Greg, can't be touched, so. Yeah, and I still think the same with Kev with numbers, man. I mean, I don't know where we'd be, truly. Uh, You know, of course we use MindBody as a a software thing, but there's so much more that goes on with growing a business. I mean, we got inventory, we sell apparel, we got fruit for the shakes, we got just uh, paying employees, taxes, state taxes, all the, the notes we have, you know what I mean? There's things to put money aside so, you know, uh, we're, we can hopefully retire one day yeah. um, or to put money aside uh, to grow our second location. So it's taking less of a check that month to put it back in for our salaries or for whatever and to see him really nail that to put it together. Um, I think that's what that's what will get us to another location. That's part of growing is which I'm learning for myself. I've always had financial things or financial issues and to yeah. see somebody who's who's good with the numbers and know he can I can trust him to cut my check and know it's dialed to a T. Yeah. You know what I mean? So absolutely. Good stuff guys. I yeah. really appreciate you guys coming on, sharing your experiences. Everybody else does. You guys have a unique thing going on here and really appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you for coming, Thanks, boss. Man. I appreciate it.